So, what we want to do is we want to figure out which one of these is going to run out first. And we're going to use mass to mass calculations to do that. Mass to mass stoichiometry to do that. So we're going to start with this 2.25 grams of silver nitrate. And we always put our starting amounts over 1. Okay. And the list of steps I gave you earlier, we need to figure out what the molar mass is for silver nitrate. We learned to calculate that last week. You list all the elements in the formula. You put in their atomic masses. The definition of uh, molar mass, however, is the sum of all the atoms in a formula of a substance. And there are three oxygen atoms, so we have to multiply this number by three. Instead of 14, we've got 14. But you have a periodic table. You could have looked that up, right? I know. Okay. Put a two there, you're right. Somebody's got their periodic table out. Now, remember that if there were empty, any empty slots over here to the right, we'd have to round off. But in this case, there are no empty slots, so we don't have to round off. Okay? So, by definition, um, molar mass is the sum of all the atomic masses of all the elements in a formula in units of grams. But in this class, I've taught you we want to all go a little further than that and say this is grams of silver nitrate, okay, and since we said in the very beginning of the unit this is equal to one mole, I want you to write that every time. This is going to give you the, the uh, equality statement you need for the conversion unit required here. Okay, whether it's written or not, anytime you have a conversion unit, there's always an equality statement. And in this class, you have to write the equality statement first. Okay, I want you to hammer that home for yourself by doing it over and over again. Write the equality statement and then build the conversion unit. The conversion unit then is fairly easy to write if you remember that you want to put the same units and species in the bottom of the conversion unit as what you have in the previous or unrounded step, whatever step there's where something isn't unrounded. If you want to convert, you've got to have something in the bottom here to cancel. So I always say start with uh, the same units and species as in the previous step. So this side of the equality statement here has the same units and species as the starting amount. So that goes on the bottom, and the other side of the equality statement goes on the top.
Why does it go on the top? Um, if I have two things that are equal, and I put them in a fraction, one side of the equality statement on the top and the other on the bottom, it doesn't matter which one, you can put it either way, the fraction itself equals one. Okay? Anytime you multiply something by one, you get what you started with, correct? Okay? So what this allows us to do is to change the measurement units without changing the amount of the substance we start with. And that's what a conversion unit does. It allows you to change the units of measurement without changing the actual amount. You know, it's like saying, I got three dozen. Well, how many eggs is that? 36. Well, that was an easy conversion that you kind of know just because you've been doing it so long. Well, this is the same sort of thing. We're just converting from, with the eggs, we're converting from dozens to individual eggs. Here, we're converting from grams to moles. Okay? All right. Now, like algebra, you can cancel X's and Y's on the top and bottom. We can cancel units on the top and bottom and species on the top and bottom. Okay? That's right. The mole is awesome. That's it. You got. It. That's the best answer I've ever heard. Yeah, like I understand how. Do I get a card? Every single problem with the mole. Maybe I should put a quote up there. The mole is awesome. Griffin Ravel. Oh, I said the mole is the bottom. Huh? I said the mole is the bottom. The bomb. Oh, the mole. Mole's the bomb. Okay. All right. Let's focus on doing this problem. All right. Now look, guys. Let's go back to our list of things you've got to be able to do here. I have, to solve this problem, I've got one, two, three different conversions I've got to do. I can do three problems, or I can do just one. Now, you want to do one? Yeah. All right, let's do one. So instead of doing equals and finding an answer, and then converting that, and finding an answer, and converting that, let's do all of them at one time. Okay? So right now, I know that if I put an equals here, I'd have moles of silver nitrate. Well, once I get the moles of silver nitrate in my list over here, when we first started, I said you're going to write a balanced equation and use the molar ratio to convert from substance 1 to substance 2. We can do that all in the same problem here. This is our substance 1 in the balanced equation and in the problem, the stoichiometry problem. And here's our substance 2. That's what we want to get to. Ask which is the limiting reactant, silver nitrate or sodium sulfate. So what I want to do is to use the Coefficients in the balanced equation to my, write a molar ratio now. Okay? So I'm going to put the same units and species in the bottom. Same units and species that I have in this step on the bottom here. So I'm going to use this coefficient, 2, and say moles of silver nitrate. So last week when we were talking about this, introducing this, we said these coefficients can represent individual formula units, or they can represent a moles of those formula units, and that's how we're using it here. Okay. All right, so we've got two moles of silver nitrate. How many moles of sodium sulfate do we have? One, One mole of sodium sulfate. Did I hear a question? Okay. All right. Now what can I do? I will need to do that, but even before I do that, I probably want to, yes. Do you want to cancel? Yeah. Are those equal or those aren't equal. Okay. This is a conversion unit. This is not. This is a conversion ratio called a molar ratio. You, a conversion unit would allow you to convert from one unit of measurement to another. This is not converting from one unit to another. So this is not a conversion unit. Okay. That's a very good question, though. Very astute. Well, actually, no. These two aren't equal, but they do allow you to go from one measurement of one species to another. Okay. What we're saying by doing this is this is the same as we we're doing those molar ratios last week in the homework problem we had to do, where we said if we have so many moles of this, how many moles of that we need? That's what we're doing here. Okay. We're just including that in one long problem. Okay. But yes, now you're correct. That the next thing we need to do is to find the molar mass to convert this back to to convert this into, into mass, okay? So we need the molar mass of sodium sulfate then.
Oh, thank you. Good gracious. So this is one of those cases where we do have empty slots to the right and we're going to round off our final addition. Yes. What now? I sure do. You are correct. Good job in your Okay, so what am I going to put on the bottom here? One more. Yeah, because I want the same units and species down here. Ah. Why? No, I said oh. Oh. All right, now just a quick, the, the fastest way I've found to put all this in the calculator is to multiply everything across the top. Multiplying by one doesn't really matter because you get the same thing, so you only multiply the numbers that are not one across the top, hit equals, and divide individually by the steps in the bottom. So here's how that works out, and it's just a fast way. Once, if you do this over and over again, you can find the stoichiometry calculations go a lot faster by doing it this way. 2.25 times 142.042, enter, then hit your divide button, 169.8731, enter, and divide by 2, okay, 169.8731, 